Hello there, Eric Lima here. You're watching episode number 79 of my uh, second YouTube channel known as EML77 TV. It's also the second chapter of my original YouTube vlog, The People's Lima, and it's my YouTube vlog of 2018. Well, summer is around the corner. Um, it is getting nicer out, 70 degree weather here in Massachusetts, thank goodness. <laughs> it's been, uh, New England weather can be really crazy. We had we had 50 degree weather like in the beginning of June, for goodness sakes. So um, it's been crazy. Well, I want to talk about a very, very uh, delicate and sensitive subject. Um, a couple of episodes ago, I talked about no longer feeling lonely and um, no longer having loneliness in my heart at all. But something came up in this past week that really struck a chord with me and made me think about a lot of things, and that would be um, two well-known celebrities uh, commit suicide. Um, I don't know how well-known they are. Uh, I'm not going to judge them with their A-list, B-list, C-list, D-list, that type of tale. Um, they, were, they were known. They were trending on Twitter. <clears throat> uh, fashion designer Kate Spade and uh, cook, um, no, chef, I should say, Anthony Bourdain, um, they committed suicide. Suicide is one subject that I never want, like to talk up. I never like to talk about it, but I think it's important that um, that I would say something about it because I know there's a lot of people out there that are going through some tough, uh, rough patches in their lives, and they probably don't know what to do with their lives. They don't know what to do in that in the situation they're in, the current situations they're in, and sometimes they do. You know, um, for me, yeah, you know, and. I, you know, I'm going to confess something, and then I had suicidal thoughts, and I don't currently have them at the moment, but I did back in the day when I was just a teenager. Um, I was going through a whole lot being a teenager, and um, at one time, at one time, I think I got in trouble for something, and I think I was, you know, I was having a very bad day, and I was so upset, and... Uh, and I recently told my stepmom, I, I, I told my stepmom back in that day, <clears throat> I was going to kill myself, and my stepmother really got upset with me about that. She got on my case about that. And she says, if you do that, it's like selling your soul to the devil himself. And that made me think a little bit, and I said, and I thought about it, and never thought about suicide again. Until I went through that whole ordeal with my ex-crush Paulette. And ran away from home a couple of times and got to the point where I screamed and cried and I don't want to kill myself. I want, you know, I want to die. And, and my dad decided to, to uh, almost run me over. He wanted to oblige me. And I was being upset, and I was going through a whole lot back then. And I was only 18 years old, and I was going through a lot. I never thought I'd go through that situation before in my life. And um, I, had to go, I, had to see, I had to go to counseling. I, uh, I, had to see, I had to see a psychiatrist. I saw a shrink. Yeah, I did. And I was trying to adjust to a new life in a new home. And I moved from the west end of my hometown, New Bedford, and moving here to the north end of New Bedford, and uh, it wasn't the easiest, 19, like I said, back in 1995 wasn't the easiest year for me at all, you know, you know, I, you know, I usually, you know, a lot of people, why are you talking about your past, why are you talking about this, well, there's just, listen, you just be, uh, just calm down, okay, I'm trying to, you know, because when you have a, we have a delicate situation, delicate subject like suicide, you have to be very, very careful, because you want, you want to speak from experience, so to speak. Because yeah, um, I never, you know, I, like I said, I never uh, slashed my wrist or something like that. I just, just, I just threatened at one point. And as I, as I, um, as I, over the years over here, I learned to search my soul a little bit more. And until June, June of '95. In fact, it's coming up. The date is coming up, June 24th, 1995. I did something that basically changed my life forever, and that would be getting a job in the real world. I started working as a dishwasher in Ruby Tuesday in North Diamond, which is now gone. Um, that job itself has taken my mind off a lot of things, you know, but it's also made me money. 
I get to buy stuff. And and started, you know, as the years progressed, I started progressing a little bit more. Sometimes I feel a little bit of regression, but I came back, you know. I could, between 1995 and 1998, I went through a lot those first three years. And it was, it was so challenging for me. And um, I graduated in 96, graduated high school, I was homeschooled. Uh, 95, 98, uh, went through a whole lot that, you know, between those two years, you know, 1999, I got my license and that changed, you know, from 95 to 2000, like I said, there's a whole lot that went, ha- a whole lot that happened, you know, on, I, I say 95 to 2001, those first six years, um, since moving here was really tough, was really rough, and there were, a lot go, there were a lot of situations going on, a lot of things are happening, changes are being made, and I, you'll say, I moved down here in 98, so you talk about, tw- I've been in this basement for 20 years, since 1990, I've been in this basement since 1998, and I've changed my life, I've got my, I had my license since 19, in fact, next year will be 20 years since I got my license, which is crazy, you know? And um, I am just amazed about how what my life is not. So, well, it's okay. What's this to do with suicide and something? Just gonna give me a minute here. And as like I said, as, as time progressed, I've been progressing. I joined. I would say I joined the music ministry uh, my church back in 1992. Ended up playing drums full time in 2004. A lot of things have happened between ne- uh, then, back then, 95 and now. And there were a lot. There are a lot of things that have been happening, and it's it's amazing what the Lord has done for me in my life, and what He's put me, what He's gotten me through. And if it hadn't been for the Lord Jesus Christ, I would not be here alive today, talking to all you great, wonderful people out there. You know, I know there's some people out there. They're not having a good life, and they're not, you know, and they're threatening, and and they're thinking about doing away with themselves. I'm going to tell you folks out there right now, suicide's never been the answer. It's not a joke. It's not funny. It's not entertaining. You know, if you're thinking, if you're, if you're having problems with your life, go talk to somebody you can trust. Whether it be your parents, whether it be uh, a, uh, an adult, a responsible adult that knows how you feel. You know, if you if you go to church, you can talk to a pastor or something. You know, talk to somebody you can trust. You know, I mean, we have a, we have a suicide prevention group back here in New Bedford. New Bedford is one of the toughest cities to live in. I can tell you that I am a native of New Bedford, proud to live in the city of New Bedford, but because I was born here, I grew up here. There were, you know, there were a lot of things that happened in my life. You know, a lot of things I wanted to forget. To be honest with you, um, a lot of things that you know that would say, forget it, man. I don't want to talk about that, but. I'm talking about it because I've been through there. I have been through a lot of things. And, yeah, I'm still standing today because I know there's people out there that love me and care about me for who I am, not what I look like. They don't care what I look like. They care about me. Who I, I got family, friends. I got folks. Uh, I made new friends on the Internet. And I got relatives. They care about me and love me for who I am. But friends of my church, friends I used to work with at Ruby Tuesday, they all care about me, man. They love me for who I am. I bring a person down and I bring smiles to people's faces. That's my ultimate goal. You know, sometimes you feel like, oh, you don't have a purpose. Well, guess what? I have a purpose. I have a purpose and, and, and I have a gift that God has given me and I intend to use it. Yeah, just, you know? Never thought I did that on <laughs> YouTube, uh, comb my hair. Excuse me for just a second. And it's it's to the point where um it's to the point where when I hear about somebody famous committing suicide, I'm like why? They have everything going for them. You know, and we still don't understand why people do this. You know? Well, listen, if you, you're having a, you've had a great life, you have somebody that loves you, and all of a sudden, you end up deciding to end your own life, it's like, I don't understand it at all. You know, it just boggles my mind. And it just, bo- it just bothers me so greatly. And, you know, I don't want to say, oh, thank God I'm not like these people or anything else. Listen, you know, we're, everybody's human. These celebrities are human, just like you and me, you know? I've, listen, I've been through a lot in my life, and 
And the reason why I don't talk about feeling lonely or I don't talk about negative stuff, about negative feelings and all that anymore, because I feel happy for the very first time. I didn't care if I have a, a, a meager minimum wage job picking up trash at a local mall or living in my parents' basement. Now, according to society standards, that, bears, that, ba- that makes me a loser. You know, I got, you know, I get, I get idiots on the internet telling me that, that I'm the biggest loser on the planet. And you know what? You know what I say about that? I don't go by society standards, man. Society sucks. That's why, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's to the point where I don't care about society and what they think no more. All right. I care about the people that I trust and love, what they think about me. I care about what friends think of me, family, relatives. I care about what they think of me. And they speak nothing but good things to me and encouraging things. And I'm very thankful for those people that God has put me in my life. Now, I don't I apologize for being preachy and all that, but you know, I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to be a testimony to people out there. I want to inspire people that hey, if Eric can get through 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 his life and be happy about it, so can I. I can't give up on my life. I can't give up on my dreams. That's right. So don't, you know, there's not, for those, suicide is not the answer. Don't do it. All right? Don't do it. Don't let the haters win. Don't let the enemy win. Do not let those who have put you down win. Fight your battle. Be strong. You know, be strong. Believe in yourself. Don't give up on your life. Think about the loved ones in your life. Because if you do, if if you think about committing suicide, you, you're going to leave them behind. I'm sure you don't want to do that. You don't want to leave, leave your friend, family and friends question, with questions of why. They love you and they care about you. You cannot give up on your life, man. Listen. After I'm done with this video, I, when I put, when I put, I'll put the number of the suicide prevention hotline in the description. Call that number if you need it. If you if you need to talk, you know. You know, I made a lot of friends. And I don't care if they believed in God or not. I don't shove God. I'm not going to shove the Bible down anyone's throats, man. That's not my deal. You know, I read the Bible. Yes. You know. You know, what's, you know what's really funny, and uh, didn't want to mention this, but I'm going to anyways, because it's probably an example. There was, back in April, there was, a couple months ago, there was a big um, a brouhaha on the Discord app on the YouTube Games and Entertainment Network, run by my good friend uh, Ronnie T. Flippin, a.k.a. Ronnie1279. There was a 14-year-old young man on, on, on there, young kid. Um... And the thing I was not, I think it happened Wednesday because I was at band rehearsal because I was never available on Wednesdays. There was a big to-do with him uh, choosing the, uh, the bonus category in Tic-Tac-Doe. And according to my friend Kevin Henry, who uh, uh, who recorded the response video to Rodney's video, um, was a question on That's Incredible Hosts. And I would have answered them right away. But to, uh, but But this young man here, this 14-year-old kid who didn't grow up during the uh, late 70s, early 80s, obviously, um, had to, you know, was looking up the answers, and he was caught typing, and everybody got, called him out on it. He was getting defensive, really upset. He was just being the, – the 14-year-old kid was being disrespectful to uh, Kevin Henry, and Kevin Henry informed my friend Rodney of the situation, and, uh, and then what happened was uh, Rodney made the decision. Yeah, I know. I know. Speaking of whom, speaking of whom, yeah. Mm. All right, I'm going to do a video here. So, anyways, Rodney made the decision of letting the kids stay on, the 14 year old kids stay on. That got, you know, Kevin Henry upset. He left the group. He was no longer friends with Rondi, which kind of I'm still I'm still saddened about that to this day. I'm still a little upset with uh, upset about that, but that's uh, that's just how I feel feel about the whole situation. Yeah. 
and uh, I was, you know, I was pretty much upset about it. So, and he did, and Rodney did a response, a response video of what uh, of uh, a response video on this. He was, you know, he said he was using the Bible of why he made that decision and everything else. And um, there was a whole, you know, and Kevin Henry made a response video out of it where um, he, ta- you know, he talked about, you know, when Rodney was shoving the Bible down anyone's throats. And uh, mm, I'm just, uh, yeah, and, uh, Just uh, you know, sorry. He keeps he, he keeps on texting me about the White, White Sox winning. They beat the Red Sox two games out of three. Don't know what's up. I, I know to me, it's tough to uh, it's tough to win uh, without Mookie Betts in your lineup. So that, that's why I'm not even bothered by it. But we're going against Orioles who are sucking win right now. Anyways, um, yeah, Boston baked beans, whatever. Anyways, um, so, and, but Kevin Henry said something that I agree with. You know, they said the Bible, he said the Bible's not an instruction booklet. It's more than that to me. It's more than an instruction booklet. To me, it's a helpful guide. To me, me, the Bible's always been a helpful guide. Okay, you're going through a situation. I, you know, sometimes you'll leaf through the scriptures. Okay, what does the scripture say about the situation? You know, I look it up and, you know. It's not you know, the Bible's not a book of do's and don'ts. It's you know, so what I'm trying to get at is also uh, for those who have gone through life, you know, pick up a Bible and read it. Sometimes it'll help you. It will guide you. Guide. That's the main key. Guide. You know, you know, yeah, a lot. You know, a lot of things are in there, but, but a lot of amazing things. And sometimes the Bible can answer, 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 answer your questions. You know, and. That's what it has done for me. But it also has helped me be an example to my friends who are out there who don't believe in God. Set the example because, you know, you know, you know, John 3.16, the most popular scripture of all, whether you believe in the Lord or not, first, the first six words of that scripture, for God so loved the world. I had to count them because <laughs> it, that basically means he loved everybody. He loved everyone, and that's my goal here: is to make, you know, be respectful, and 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 follow, you know, be respectful, and basically, the basic, the basic big uh, scripture is love thy neighbor and uh, or, or love and love your enemies, love one another. You know, it doesn't have. It doesn't. When it's the word love, you think, oh, romantic love. No, it's agape love. It's like like a family type. You know, family. You know, you give somebody a big hug. It's how you doing. Was a friend. Was a relative. It's you know. Bottom line is, there's people out there that love you, and if you're thinking of suicide, don't. Don't. Instead, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody that you can trust, whether it be your parents, whether it be, you know, an adult that has gone through the same situation you have, whether it be, you know, whether it be, wow, oh, mind blown, uh, or be a pastor in your church or something like that, you know. I'm just thankful that I'm alive today and to encourage people. And, yeah, you know, I like to be an entertaining guy on my videos. Well, I play some of my game shows on my videos or video games on my videos. It's, I want to have fun. I want to have fun. But at the same time, if there's, a, uh, if, if there's a, a sensitive subject that, you know, that kind of affects me greatly, I'll talk about it. But in a way where, you know, I want to help out. I want to say, hey, listen, I care about you guys out there. You know what I mean? I care about all my friends. I care about my family. There's some times when you're busy and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going home from work and you're zonked out. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, oh, wake up. What's going on? Oh, shoot. That's right. Oh, my God. You know, it's like all this craziness is going on. 
like you know, like my cousin's wedding reception this past last weekend. It was the best I the best time I ever had. You know, I had the groom, my cousin's groom, like like my cousin's husband. They've been together for 19 years. All right, and he knows me. He said, "Dude," it, it, and he came up to me. He hugged me a couple times, saying, "Dude, you're my ray of light. You're my ray of sunshine." I'm glad you're here. I'm happy that you're here. He was happy that I was there to celebrate, to share that moment, you know, to share, to, to uh, celebrate with them. And it was the coolest thing ever. And it was, it meant a lot to me when people tell me about that. In fact, I made a new friend in my, um, I found out she's also my cousin, Nicole. And she said, you, I like your dance moves, you know. And and she goes and I remember one time right she we finished with doing a dance and she uh, I think we we're dancing the Madonna's into the groove which I liked love the eighties tunes the DJ was banging out eighties and nineties tunes but I digress uh, she said you know I'm gonna go get a drink do you drink no I told her I don't need a drink I'm having fun being go- uh, I I don't need a drink to have fun on the dance floor and being goofy and having a great time and she's that's why I love that's why I love you and and she was pretty cute but she's my cousin. So what can you do, right? But you know, we're family. So it was really cool to have another family member you know, being part of your life. It's really awesome, and I'm really thankful that you know people like that. You know, you know, for them to say stuff, um, good stuff like that to me, it warms my heart. It makes me feel good about myself, and makes me not worry about my life. It makes me not worry about the job that I have to do. I have to go back to work Monday tomorrow. It's like, oh gosh, you know, I enjoy one day off, here comes back to reality. Uh, but this week's pay week, so looking forward to that. You know what I mean? I mean, I have like umpteen million things I can do in my room here. Uh, I'm going to have fun with. I mean, imagine this. I have all this stuff. You think I'm, you think I want to commit suicide? Heck no. I'm 41 years old now. Listen. I could still go back in the day and get nostalgic a little bit. But at the same time, at the same time, I can catch up to speed and, t- and, you know, and try to get with the times of today. Is it easy? No. But I'm going to do it. Listen, many, to many of you, to, to, in society standards, my life may suck. But I don't think my life sucks. I don't myself personally. According to society standards, another story. But I don't go by society standards any longer. Society standards mean nothing to me. It's what I feel in my heart. Okay. I don't care what these internet trolls think of me. They they say garbage to me that don't even mean squat. They don't even mean jack squat. Why? Because they don't know me. They don't know who I am. They know nothing. They don't know diddly squat about me. Nothing. Zip, zolts, goose egg, donut. Okay? Nothing. These dumb, you know, these internet trolls, they, they troll my video over the years, troll my, troll my Facebook, troll my, uh, you know, you, Twitter, troll my YouTube over these years. They don't know a darn thing. Not a darn thing. Or as Wayne Brady would say on Whose Line Is It Not a damn thing. Excuse my language. <laughs> and then it's like, can we throw an X at some of these people? It's like, come on. And they're trying to bring you down. The bullies, trolls, and haters are trying to, or I call them the BTH club. They're trying to bring you down. They're trying to destroy you. Don't listen to them. They think they know the whole world. But what these punks don't know is what that I'm not going to listen to them. They better realize it and they better learn real quick that I'm not going to listen to them. Because I don't go by their standards. I don't go by society standards. I don't go by the world standards. I go by what I believe in my heart. I go by who I am. I go by what the Lord has created me to be. I like to be unique. I like to be one in a million. I like to be who I am. And if anybody's got a problem with it, there's the door. Don't let it hit you on the way out, son. 
Because the fact of the matter is, is this. Bottom line is, suicide should never be part of your brain vocabulary. That word suicide should never be part of your vocabulary unless it's a professional wrestler from Impact Wrestling. You know what I mean? Or you're nicknaming Sabu the suicidal, genocidal, homicidal maniac. All right? But the fact of the matter is, is this, guys. If you ever thought of suicide, the number will be in the link in the description. Give it out a call. It could save your life forever. Now, listen, I've been through a lot in my whole life. I've been through a lot, but I'm still standing here today. Why? But I believe in never giving up on life. I never give up. I never give up on myself. I did, I did, I did some positive things. I did, I did some great things in my life, too. Like try a petition to try to bring the Wellness City Festival back. You know? And in a way, it did. So, in a way, I succeeded. But, you know... A lot of people out there that think, uh, oh, living in your parents' basement and, and working a minimum wage job makes you a loser. Now, I've heard about the 30-year-old guy getting sued by his parents from New York that, you know, kick him out of the house and all that. That's not how my parents roll. They love me, you know. I, I was supposed to move out earlier this year. That didn't happen. Something happened. Something fell. It wasn't me. My sister offered me a place, uh, offered me to stay at her place. She had a room. They had, she and her husband had a room. My brother-in-law had a room all set up for me. He said, "I'll start moving in stuff in there." But then, last minute, my brother-in-law sent me a Facebook message. They did a lot of soul searching, and he decided not to uh, have me move in there. I was kind of bummed. I was a little upset, but I wasn't that upset. I th I personally thanked them for their kindness and hospitality. For their offer, but if they feel, but the next time they feel they're ready, I can understand some situations. My brother, my brother-in-law has PTSD. I have a nephew that has autism. So, but then again, maybe financially they can't support it. I don't know. I really don't know for sure. I don't know what the story is, but you know what though, that's okay. Because God has a reason for everything. Everything is happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. But remember this, guys. Before you think about suicide, ask yourself. I'm here on this earth for a reason. What reason can that be? Go out and look for that reason. Instead of thinking about, oh, my life sucks. I'm going to kill myself. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Look for your purpose. Look for the gift. You have a gift inside you. All of us have a gift, a talent inside of all of us. It's time for us to use it. Whatever that is. Me? I have a talent playing drums. I've been playing in the music ministry since over 14 years. For 14 years I've been playing drums for the music ministry in my church. And I'm proud of that. I served in that band for 26 years. You know... I loved music since the 80s. Michael Jackson's Thriller was my first cassette album that inspired me to get into music. Then my stepmother came into my life and inspired me more. It's the matter of finding your purpose on this earth. What is your purpose on this earth? I found my purpose. I'd like for you to find yours. Don't think about suicide. Don't think about committing it. Don't even talk about it. Unless you need help. And in that case, find someone you can trust. Sit down with that person. Say, hey, this is what I'm going through. This is what's happening to me. I need help. Again, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. I'm going to try to get that number. Put it on the link in the description. Bottom line is, guys, you got something to live for. Don't give up on your life, man. Listen, I don't have a girlfriend. May not, I may not get one ever. 
may not get a wife, may not get children of my own. And you know what? I'll be fine with that. You know? Maybe, I don't know, I'll, maybe I'll never feel lonely for the rest of my life. I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen, to be honest. But I can't be afraid about the, the unknown. I can't fear the unknown. I cannot sit here and say, what's going to happen to my parents? What's going to happen? And be, and be freaking out, all scared, all you know, freaking out, stressed out. I'm not going to worry about that, seriously. I want to worry about the here and now. I don't want to worry about the future. And I don't want to worry about the past, but here and now. I like talking about 70s, and, I mean, I like talking about 80s and 90s stuff, because that's what my, that was my decade, man. That's where I grew up on, man. Forgive me to rub my nose a couple times. I don't know what it is. It's a little itchy. But the fact of the matter is, is this, guys. You know, I know there's people out there that love me for who I am. If those who hate me, so what? You know, they don't know me. There's some people out there that find me annoying. Yeah, I'm annoying sometimes. Yeah, sure. But do I care? You know? Nowadays, I've, to I've toned it down a little bit. I've toned down, you know... I've toned down my... You know, I used to be this wild and crazy kid on the drums. I felt like I was Animal from the Muppets, you know? When I was Dr. Teeth Electric Mayhem Band. Remember that? You know? I, was, I thought I was Animal when I was on the drums the first time around. I was going nuts like Animal. But now, nowadays, it's like, you know... You're more mature, you're learning a whole lot, and you're learning to feel the rhythm. You just got to, you know, do do the thing, man. You know, do the thing, brother. But I am very thankful for my life. And to this day, and to this day, I didn't care what the haters think no more. Uh, you know, here, here's the funny part about, you know, I tweeted something the other day about, you know, some flat earth, you know, some flat earth people thinks that Australia does not exist. Oh, boy, I was upset. It's like, how stupid can these people be? You know, when I learned geography back in the day when I was in school, every country, I know the seven continents. And and then these flat earthers, these crazy people say that that Australia does not exist. Oh my gosh, I said, some of these, uh, whoever believes that is are stupid idiots. And then this goofball, alien from outer space on Twitter named Jebediah Moltros, says, why you hate, why are you upset about it? Why? I went, why? It's stupid. It's stupid. Get, you know, it's, why are you asking me a dumb question? Why are you asking me? I'm, and listen, I'm not trying to annoy you. It's because your tweet is judgmental. Tweet is judgmental. How judge, if, 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 I'm like, judgmental? Are you nuts? They're saying that Australia does not exist. It's stupid. That's the stupidest thing. Australia does exist, man. I follow a few wrestlers on there, right? Tweet this to them and say, hey, you, can you believe this crap? You know, that's an insult to the people, to the Australian celebrities that I follow on Twitter. That's an insult. The biggest insult to Hugh Jackman. He will go Wolverine on that person who wrote that, who, who wrote that stupid thing. This Jebediah Maltras, I don't know, he, he, he claims... He claims to be a Republican. Well, he likes Trump and everything else. And I'm not a big fan of Trump or anything else, but I'm not going to get into politics with this guy, all right? And he's like, and, but he had the unmitigated gall to call me a liberal millennial snowflake. First of all, I'm not, I'm far beyond liberal. I'm Eric Lima, all right? I have no affiliation, no political affiliation whatsoever, dude. Two, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and I'm 41 years old, moron. Hello? And three, I'm old school. I like being old school. So doofus is like you, and then all of a sudden I kept on going. He's like, ha, 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 I don't mind the, I mean, you made the list. No, you made the list, pal. You're blocked. Boom. Block button comes up there. No more Jebediah Maltras. What kind of name is Jebediah Moltres? What is he, an Amish dude? You know? My dad's going, my dad's sporting an Amish beard right now. You know? 
to pick on a friend of his up in New Hampshire who's got the Amish look down. Who's so, and everybody's picking on my, my this morning, my band leader, picking on my father at our church, and my pastor's doing the same thing. It's like, even, even last weekend, my relatives were doing the same thing. I nicknamed him the Amish Portuguese. <laughs> you know, but still, you know. Uh you see, I can laugh at some simple things like that. I love my father. I love my dad. I do admit, though, I wait until he, I, 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 I waited till he left the reception, because we took separate cars. So I can go out on the dance floor. I stayed till, uh, stayed till the very end of the reception. You know, I, my dad's afraid. I'm afraid my dad's going to get on my case about why are you dance like that. You're an idiot and all that. No. I said, I would have said the problem with you, dad, is you, you have no rhythm for music, man. Unlike me, you have no rhythm for music. That's why I think that's what it is. That's what I think it is. It's a conspiracy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just having fun. With you see, I wanted to be entertaining and fun at the same time. I think I believe I'm purpose here. That's why I refuse to think of suicide anymore. I refuse to be lonely anymore. Because I have a lot of people I interact with here on the Internet. And also at home. Also, wherever I go. I run to somebody, hey, how you doing? It's been a long time coming. Hey, what's going on with you? You know, makes me feel good to see that. You know, I'm going to have a great time this summer. It's going to be an awesome summer. Guys, once again, once I put the phone number about the suicide prevention on the link in, uh, in the description after I make this video, if, you, if anybody out there is thinking suicidal thoughts, please call that number. It'll be right down there. I'm serious. You know, I care about you guys. I care about my followers, my subscribers. I want to thank you for your support. Family, friends, relatives, thank you for your support. Appreciate it wholeheartedly. And I'm going to keep doing this thing until the Lord himself decides, well, son, I think it's about time that you come home. But until I call you home, I give you a gift you use it. Don't worry, Lord. I got, I got you. I got you. Raise the roof. I'm just very thankful for my life. I'm very thankful for the gift that God has given me and the friends he's blessed me with. All of you. I'm like Gilbert Godfrey. Give you a big hug. <laughs> like Hollywood Squares, you know, Gilbert Godfrey. You fool! Okay, <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> Oh, you see, I'm having too much fun. Eric Lima, baby! It's Adam Cole, but you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm having too much fun here. So, what we learned today, kids, suicide is never the answer. I love you all. I'll see you later. Episode number 80, coming up. What am I going to talk about then? Possibly talk about Possibly uh, going into the Money in the Bank, NXT TakeOver. Who knows for sure. That's coming up soon. Payday on Friday. What am I going to get? What kind of swag am I going to get this time? Who knows for sure. So before this gets way out of hand, I'll see you guys later. Episode 79 is complete. Remember, National uh, Suicide Prevention Hotline number will be in my description. Anybody thinking suicidal thoughts, give that number a call. And if you're having more problems, get some help. All right? Guys, smile. You have a wonderful, um, wonderful rest of the evening. And uh, hopefully your summer goes well, too. I'll see you guys around. Catch you on the flip side. Peace.